I read the lawsuit. It is um, eye-opening, to say the least. It is shocking, to say the least. And um, on top of it, uh, I kept trying to put myself in, in his shoes. Think about it. Put yourself in this man's shoes, okay? Put yourself in this man's shoes. You're sitting at home, and you're getting ready to interview with the New York Giants. And you're probably sitting there thinking, uh, at some point, I can't believe I don't have a job in Miami anymore. You know, I I just coached the Miami Dolphins to -to back-to-back winning seasons uh, for the first time since 2003, and um, and I did it this year after starting one and seven, first team in the history of the NFL, lose seven in a row and win seven in a row in the same season. And when Brian Flores got fired a couple of weeks ago, that was the surprise, that was the shocker, that was the eyebrow raiser, and the reason that was given publicly by Stephen Ross, the owner of the Miami Dolphins, and I'm paraphrasing here, was essentially there were communication problems. And you're sitting there and you think you can uh, maybe get a job with the New York Giants, and you're from the Brownsville section of New York City. I mean, when we interviewed Brian Flores uh, this year, he had that thick New York accent going on. This is his hometown. So the New York metropolitan area, for him to land in this job with the New York Giants, that would be what one would say monumental for him personally and professionally. And you get a text from your former coach up in New England, Bill Belichick. You look down at your phone, and he's congratulating you on the job. And and um, and you're wondering, wait a minute, I'm I'm interviewing for this thing. I got a dinner coming up. Did you hear something I didn't hear? He said, and um, he mentioned that you know he's interviewing with the Giants on Thursday because Belichick texted him Giants with a bunch of question marks and exclamation points. He says, I think I got a shot at it. Got it. I hear from Buffalo and NYG that you are their guy. Hope it works out if you want it. And then he begins to realize that maybe Belichick's got the wrong Brian. It's Dable, not Flores. He asks him, Coach, you talking to Brian Flores at Brian Dable just to make sure. And he wrote back, sorry, I mean, I blanked this up. I double-checked and misread the text. I think they're naming Dable. I'm sorry about that, BB. And all you can write back is like, okay, thanks, Bill. And you're thinking, oh, my God. Belichick, who is, you know, obviously tight with the Giants organization. Joe Judge gets hired there. And, and, you know, they reach out to Belichick, I'm sure, in the past. And you figure he's got this lock-solid information. And, you know, the question is not, you know, um, him uh, maybe messing up that he's texting the wrong Brian, that he misread the text he got from somebody else. And he thought it was Flores, it was really Dable, and now, uh uh-oh. And you're thinking, I'm now, what, going to go through this interview? Why am I going through this interview? And why do they want to interview me? And you're thinking about it, okay, it's got to be the color of my skin. There's a Rooney rule, they got to check a box. And you, you sit there and you think, well, why would he think that? If you are at all thinking, why would he think that? Well, in his lawsuit, he says, when the Denver Broncos were looking to hire Vic Fangio, they interviewed him, and he said that John Elway and Joe Ellis uh, showed up late, and he even put in this lawsuit he thought that they were out drinking the night before. Now, both the Giants and the Broncos pushed back and refuted that this had happened. But you're sitting there, and you're thinking to yourself, how am I in this position to begin with when I got fired? And he then lets it known in this lawsuit that his owner, the reason why he was falling out of disfavor with him is because, number one, he was asked to lose games in the 2019 season to improve their Dolphins draft position in 2020. As you know, that was the the Tua Burrow draft. He said that the owner offered him $100,000 for every loss. And then he also said that prior to 2020, uh, draft after the season was over that there was a player who was not yet a free agent that was in that the uh, owner wanted Brian Flores to meet Flores was pushing back against that because the guy's not yet a free agent and that he was invited to a boat in the Miami Marina and invited on you know the owner's boat and uh, guess who showed up the player in question, he said he left right away. And because of those two approaches, balking at tanking and tampering, he fell out of disfavor. That's a lot to chew on. <laughs> if you're that guy, do you sue? 
You got to think long and hard about it. He did. And sure enough, according to all reports, Brian Flores filed the suit yesterday, first day of Black History Month, but also on the day where he was interviewing with the Saints. And Texans, apparently he let them know, hey, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm filing suit, but I still want the job. This is what he had to say this morning on CBS this morning. On the subject. I absolutely want to coach in this league, but I also know that this isn't, I'm not the only story here. Yeah. I'm not the only one with a story to You're tell. You're speaking up for decades I'm, of I'm, this going on this and is, hopefully stopping it this from happening. Is, this is, you know, there are people who have come before me and, 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 um, I know there are others who, who, have, who have similar stories, and um, it's hard to speak out. Um, it is. You know, yeah. You're giving up. You're making some sacrifices. But um, this is, again, this is bigger than football. This is bigger than coaching. Now, it's tough to ask for a job uh, from a league that you're suing, but I, I, I'll, I'll say this. If you're looking for a coach who wants to stand on his principles and be a leader of men and show them – this is the way I want to uh, stand up for myself in a system that I believe has completely wronged me. Isn't that that guy you want to hire? Now, I know it would be tough to walk into a, a room, I would assume, with other owners who are trying to deal with discovery processes and things of that nature and say, I've hired this person, but maybe somebody should do that and say that we are about this in this league and and we will deal with whatever has happened in the past. But right now, what's prologue is Brian Flores on a roster somewhere coaching because he's a damn outstanding football coach who stands on his merits and principles. I don't know how this works in a lawsuit. I don't know how this works in a lawsuit. Uh, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of people very upset with Brian Flores today as somebody from his legal staff might be trying to, in a discovery process, find out who texted the modern-day Lombardi from the Giants or the Bills to say it's Dayball's job before he's um, before he's gone out and um, interviewed and had a dinner there. Um, I, I wonder who might uh, have their, um, I guess, credit cards somehow... Um, made part of discovery to see if, in fact, uh, certain executives were out drinking the night before uh, an interview, right? Uh, I wonder how one can say, um, and I mean, look, and I'll just say this here, nothing is worse. (laughs) Nothing is worse than somebody being treated differently or malevolently because of the color of their skin. This country, as we all know, was built on the fault line of racism and the plates move every day. Okay? So there's nothing worse than that. But if an owner is telling a coach, I'll give you six figures for every loss you have, that needs to be investigated immediately, if not sooner. And Hugh Jackson, down at his gig in... um, in the HBCU football world, says Jimmy Haslam of the, of the uh, flat out saying on Twitter that he, he, that the league should be looking into Jimmy Haslam too when he was losing games with the Browns. This is what we call a holy heck of a mess. And I don't, you know, I don't know if Discovery's going to set, set it up or the league has to have some sort of an investigation and, but if there's ownership saying lose games on purpose, I mean, that goes to the very heart of what the hell are we watching? And nobody wants to think that watching any sport and certainly the NFL. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 